Monkey bread is the ideal holiday baking recipe because you can make it for a crowd, put it down at your holiday party, and everyone can eat it with their hands. It's like dessert finger food. This version uses a brioche dough that's not too sweet, but it's very rich. So now I'm gonna show you how to make the brioche. The first step of the recipe is to take two sticks of butter and beat it until smooth in the mixer. And that makes it easy to incorporate into the dough, but it keeps the butter a little bit cold so that the dough doesn't soften too much. So that looks good. The pieces have disappeared and I just have a smooth but still cold mixture. I'm taking the butter out of the bowl and transferring it to a separate bowl because I'm going to put the dough together in the mixer. So I have one packet of active dry yeast. I want to do something called proof the yeast, which is make sure that the yeast is alive. So I need to dissolve it in a little bit of warm liquid and I have a third of a cup of milk to balloon the yeast. I just want to heat it up first until it's warm but not hot, so just steaming. So I want to proof it in this bowl. So this mixture hopefully will bubble up and get very foamy. In about five minutes, I should see lots of you know, foamy bubbles on top. So while I'm waiting for that, I can put the other ingredients into the bowl. I have three cups of all-purpose flour, three tablespoons of granulated sugar, one teaspoon of kosher salt. So just whisk these ingredients together and I'm just waiting on the yeast. It looks like it's like made Australia. It's like a good, it's a good Rorschach test. Like, what do you see in the proofed yeast? <laughs> in the words of Brad, muy, muy activo. The yeast has bubbled off, so this goes into the mixing bowl. Four large eggs at room temp. Now I get the dough hook going, starting on low. So now the eggs are broken up, I'll increase the mixer speed to about medium. And it will just start bringing, incorporating that flour from the sides into the dough into a single mass in the center. The doughs come together. You can see it's quite stiff, but it's also very smooth. And now I'm ready to add the butter. I start really just a tablespoon at a time. I'm just waiting for the dough to absorb that first piece of butter before I add another bit. I greased a bowl here with a little bit of room temp butter. This is where I'm gonna proof the dough. And here I have a very smooth, very beautiful dough. I like to kind of form it into a smooth dome. That makes it expand really evenly so I have a good sense of how it's doubling in size. And this just goes into the bowl, seam side down, and I'll cover it in plastic. All right, into a warm spot until doubled in size, which will take about an hour. Okay, so the dough has about doubled in size. So I have a 13 by nine pan here. I'm gonna line this pan in plastic. I'm going to turn this out onto my work surface. And this part's important, I'm gonna degas it. And that will just, again, help me to get a more even rise the second time around. And now I'm gonna press it into this pan into an even layer. So now I'm going to cover it with the overhang of plastic. And the dough is quite soft because that butter is room temperature. So I'm gonna put it in the freezer, not to freeze it, um, but to just have the dough cool down so that the butter is hard and I can cut it into an even grid. That'll take, you know, 20 to 30 minutes. While I'm waiting for my dough to firm up in the freezer, I can prep my pan and also make my cinnamon sugar coating. I have a couple tablespoons of just softened butter, so just a thin, even layer of butter, and definitely getting up the tube and around the sides. The first time I made monkey bread at home, I did not account for how much it was gonna rise, and the thing like was like Streganona's pasta pot, it like bubbled out. You guys ever use Gorilla Glue? Yeah, it expands. I just bought Gorilla Glue because I had to re-glue the floor tiles in my bathroom. And I, oh my god, I walked, I like walked past my bathroom and was like, ah! Uh -huh. And then you can't like clean it up because it yeah. hardens into cement. It's kind of like a chisel. It's a, it's a thick foam, actually. Can you come over and <laughs> fix it? <laughs> okay, never mind. Thanks, Brad. So the next step is to dust the pan with sugar. Sanding sugar gives like a really pretty sparkle to the outside. So if you have it, go ahead and use it. If not, granulate it's fine. So each piece of the monkey bread gets coated in a mixture of cinnamon sugar. So I have three quarters of a cup of sugar and a tablespoon of cinnamon. The main flavors in this recipe are butter and cinnamon sugar. So you wanna make sure that you're really tasting the cinnamon. For the forming stage, I have not only my cinnamon sugar, but I have six tablespoons of melted butter that's warm but not hot. And I have my dough that was in the freezer. You might be thinking, wow, that's a whole lot of butter in this recipe, but I'm not gonna use all of this. I mean, it's still a lot of butter, but I don't know, it's the holidays. So just a, an even coating on top of the dough. So this gets pretty generous coating of the cinnamon sugar and move it all around. 
Rather than coating each little ball in butter and then cinnamon sugar, you're kind of doing it all at once. Pour that excess back into the bowl. The plastic wrap is gonna help me get it out of the pan. And now on the other side, another layer of butter and cinnamon sugar. So I'll cut this into a 12 by six grid. Okay, so now I have my grid and my prepared pan. And now I'm ready just to form these quickly into little spheres. So when I place them in the pan, I'm spacing the balls between a quarter and a half inch apart because they're gonna expand quite a bit. This is a fun thing to do if you have a lot of cooks in the kitchen or kids, they can help with this part of just rolling, rolling the dough. So last piece goes in, it's like right there. For this to proof again, for the second rise, I will cover it in plastic. And I'll put this in a warm spot and I will wait until the balls have nearly doubled in size. It'll take about 40 or 50 minutes. Okay, so it's been actually closer to 50 minutes, um, but the dough is proofed. And if I poke one, what happens is the dough springs back but leaves a slight indentation. So that's how you know you're there. All right, so my oven is at 350. I'll put this in until it's risen. The top is golden brown. That'll take between 25 and 35 minutes. Okay, it's been close to 30 minutes, but I think it's time to pull it now. Oh yeah, it looks really good. So you can see it's evenly golden brown and the top is firm to the touch, so I know it's ready. My favorite part about this recipe, besides just eating it, is that when, as it bakes, like all of the butter and cinnamon sugar creates this smell that like pumps into your kitchen and it's like being in a bakery and it smells so, so good. So um, yeah, if you have guests coming over, pop this in the oven, it creates like just the most incredible kitchen aroma. I have sugar flying everywhere. There we go. So now it's perfectly in one piece. To finish, I will put it on a serving platter. And I have just a little bit of a caramel sauce. So I just give it a little glaze. And now all I have left to do is taste. I'm going to go, I like that guy. I want this one. Mm. It's crispy. Cinnamon, sugary, buttery. It's pretty hard to beat. Perfect for your holiday parties. But just to get a second opinion, I'm gonna have some people come and try it. Cue the hungry hordes. God, get out of the way. If you stand here long enough, you'll like eat half of it. That's, I'm not saying that from experience. Um, it's a sticky, cinnamony, made for a crowd holiday centerpiece. So, there you go, voila. Good.